Welcome back. Uh, we're here today with uh, Notre Dame's lacrosse coach, Kevin Corrigan. Kevin boasts a uh, nearly 770% winning record in his in his tenure here at Notre Dame. Quite the uh, quite the success of building the program. So, Kevin, how when it's uh, 12 degrees out and snow all over the place, do you get ready for lacrosse season? This is usually the week when I write Mr. Loftus a letter and tell him how much I appreciate his contribution to the university. Uh, you know, we, we have the, the best practice situation in the country, frankly. We've got a beautiful indoor field that's full field. And uh, as we tell the recruits, it's partly sunny and, and 70 degrees in there every day of the year. So, um, you know, that it, it really is, uh, you know, we're, we're in shorts and t-shirts. We're, we're in a great teaching environment because you're, you're, you're kind of contained in there and, and uh, there are very few distractions. Uh, so it, it, it's, uh, you know, what, what could be a negative is, is very much a positive for us. You talk about the teaching environment. One of the teachers is new this year, right? You have a former player who's joined the staff. Yeah, and that's been a great thing. Uh, that, you know, it, it's uh, Brian Fisher did just an absolutely fabulous job for us for for seven years. <clears throat> but uh, when he left this summer to become the head coach at, at Monmouth, uh, we were able to get Matt Carwick to come back and and. Um, Great to have a, a former player back, uh, but better to have a guy like you know Matt Carwick that just brings great enthusiasm, great love of the game. Uh, he loves working with the guys, and and uh, you know I think he's going to really add uh, a different element than than what Brian did in in that uh, kind of really helping guys develop individually uh, as players because that's something he's he's very good at and, and loves to do. And what's the assessment at this <clears throat> point in the preparation period? What do you see? Of us? Yeah. Gosh, uh, hard to say. You know, we're leaving to go down and, and uh, we'll have two scrimmages this weekend, one with the national team and one with Jacksonville University. And, and I'm really anxious to, to see that. Um, I don't know that we've ever had a more competitive situation on our team. We've got three starting attackmen back, uh, probably the best freshman attackmen we've, we've ever had. Um, and, uh, and, and two other guys that are juniors that are absolutely playing the best of their career. Uh, I couldn't tell you what our, what our you know, lineup is going to look there you know, right now, uh, and, and we're three weeks from our first game. So i um, anxious to see, you know, the, the, get some clarity at that position through the scrimmages. Um, same thing in the midfield. Uh, we've got, you know, I, honestly, 10 guys who are competing. Uh, and, and we don't know whether we'll play three midfields and nine of them will get a chance or two midfields and six of them will get a chance or whether we can slip another guy in kind of a, a swing role where he, you know, maybe we get a seventh guy into a rotation. Uh, you know, just, just a lot of uncertainty and, and, and good problems to have because we've got so much competitiveness within the team that we just, you know, we can't sit there and write down guys' names in ink and know that they're going to be the guys yet. Um, but we're getting to that point where we've got to settle in on some things. And I think the next couple of weeks, uh, two scrimmages this weekend, one the next, uh, will give us a, a real clarity maybe about where, where we want to be, at least for Duke, you know. And Yeah. Your program has built a real identity around defense and is typically one of the best defensive programs in the country. Do you expect that to be a strength of the team again this year? I, I do because I always do. Uh, you know, look, let's start. We, we have the best goalie in the country, so we're, we're, we're not going to give up too many. Um, but uh, we build our team from the defensive end of the field. And I think, uh, I think philosophically you have to, to kind of get comfortable with what you're, you're gonna, where you're going to build your team, where it's going to start and, and all that. You know, we, we've got really smart, uh, tough-minded, athletic kids. Um, to me, that says you can be a great defensive team with those skill set and with that skill set and, and, and with guys like that. So we're going to start there. Um, it's awfully hard to beat a great defensive team. And, and, uh, and then hopefully offensively now, I think we've, you know, we're getting more and more talented and, and uh, I hope we'll be a very good offensive team as well. But I, I know uh, that we'll be good defensively. And it, 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 it it, it kind of goes to everything that we do, the decision-making that we make in transition, the decision-making we make at the offensive end, um, uh, you know, is, is, is geared towards us being a great defensive team as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a full team thing. It's not right. three guys at that end or, or you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's more of a commitment by the whole program that that's something we're going to be great at. No, that's, you, can, you can certainly see it on the field. Uh, th as we approach the start of the season, a lot of preseason accolades for the team. Uh, you got the kiss of death there. You got, <laughs> you got, you got ranked as the best uh, yeah. preseason team in the conference and a lot of individual recognition for the guys. 
Does, does that create any pressure, or do you just ignore it? I, I really try to ignore it. I, I, I hope the players do. I, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't, because I know that it means nothing. And, and uh, you know, frankly, with the number of games that we played, one goal, two goal games last year, I, I know how fine the edge is between success and and uh, and, and not having success. So uh, I, I don't get caught up in that stuff. Uh, I do like the fact that our guys get some attention. That they, they, I think they deserve it. They've earned it. And, and so I, I don't have a problem with that um, per se, uh, as long as they don't think it means anything other than people think they could be good. You yeah. know, we, we, we continue to try to remind them every day that that doesn't mean anything until they actually are good during the games. You know. You know, we see evidence of it everywhere, but obviously the sport has grown tremendously uh, in recent years, throughout your time here, uh, but especially in recent years. How does that impact your approach to recruiting? Is it do you have more of more territory to cover these days? Yeah, that that's a big part of it. You really do. Um, I think you have to balance some of this too. It's funny. I just was on the phone this morning with the coach from Syracuse, and and we were talking about one of the hidden impacts of this is that you're you know, before, when you got a kid from some of the longtime traditional programs, West Genesee in upstate New York, or Boys Latin in, in Baltimore, or, you know, West Islip on Long Island or whatever, you, you, you assumed a lot about that kid and about what his skill set was, what his mentality was, what his um, IQ for the game and, and, and all that was going to be. And, and that's different when you're now getting a kid who's maybe a great athlete, but he's from Utah or he's from, you know, Arizona or Southern California or Texas. And uh, so I think you have to balance some of those guys. And, and, and you know, I don't, I don't know that you want a whole team from Baltimore anymore, but I don't know that you want a whole team from California either. So I think it just means you've really got to you got to be thoughtful about the way you put your recruiting classes together. And uh, and, and but it's but it's great to have the 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 number of players out there and, and the competitiveness for all that. Yeah, a lot of thought goes into building the schedule too. You mentioned the Duke game, which sort of gives you an, an early season read on where you are, but what's the approach to that? How do you, how do you build that to sort of lead, create a path to where you want to get in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, you know, I mean, for me, in all honesty, it's always been to try to play as many of the best teams as we can play. Um, that's the most fun. Uh, that's, you know, it leads to, you know, whether, Opening with Duke the last four years, um, our two seasons have been better the last four years. But our guys know the first time out, you know, we're playing a top team, and 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 uh, we better be ready to play. And I I love that. You know, I mean that that means to me every day counts, and 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 really we have the attention of our guys. There's a sense of urgency in everything we're doing, and to me that's how we're going to get to be the best team. If it costs us a couple wins early in the year. Um, you know, then it then it does. But uh, you know, I think we've had pretty good success with it, and and more than that, it's just it creates an environment and, and a culture uh, within what we do that that really matches what we want as coaches, and and so I think it's a good match. Yeah, great season last season. Last game wasn't exactly what you wanted out of it. Um, does that serve as a motivation for the players this year, or are you just every season is its own story? Yeah, everything, every season is its own story, but you can't ignore the, the history of all the guys in the program. You know, for, for each of the guys in our program uh, right now, their season has ended in the NCAA tournament. It's ended with, a, with a, a loss that we felt could have been a win, and it's ended with us scoring five goals. Uh, and, and, and it's not because we're not a good offensive team, because the previous game to that in each of those three years, we've scored between 12 and 14 goals. And so we're a good, competent offensive team, but we've struggled in that last game. And, and so we've, you know, we, we, we're, you know, we're nothing if not honest with our guys. And uh, they know, you know where we stand on, on, on that. And we talk a lot about what, what things we need to be doing right now so that in May we don't find ourselves sitting on five and, and uh, going home early. We, you know, we want to play the last game and, uh, of the year, and, 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 and we'd like to score 12 in that one. Well, you've been knocking on that door. We're getting to be regulars at that, uh, at that Final Four, and I look forward to another great season. Thanks for all you do for Notre Dame lacrosse. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Oh, oh, oh.